Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? My name is Robin, and welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're gonna be learning all about XCI, which is a high yield Canadian based dividend ETF. In today's video, we're gonna be covering things such as the overall returns of XCI. We'll talk about the dividend yield, we'll talk about the fees associated with the ETF, and we'll talk about the holdings of the stocks that are held within inside this ETF, and so much more. So let's dive inside the video, let's take a peek at XCI, and let's see what this fund is all about. So here's the homepage of the main stock we're going to be focusing on in today's video, which is the ETF XEI. That's iShares S&P TSX Composite High Dividend Index ETF. And this information is all based off their website. So as we go through this stuff, um, I will put a link in the description of this video and you guys can find this information 100% on their website. One thing I'm a big fan of the iShares company is that they lay out these ETFs in a very nice, easy way for us to kind of go through them and kind of analyze them. So we're going to do a quick little overview of the ETF here. So some quick little uh, notes here. So the ticker is XEI. Uh, you can find that by typing that into like whatever brokerage that you guys use. Um, currently trades for $24.56 Canadian on the TSX and the year-to-date return is up 2.75%. Now let's take a quick little peek at the returns of XCI and see how the Canadian markets have actually done over the past few years. So it's important to note that the Canadian markets have not done very well over the past couple years. So if you look at these returns, they're obviously going to be pushed down a little bit. So just kind of keep that in mind that the overall Canadian market has been down a fair bit over the past couple years or so. But here's the year-to-date returns of just the stock growth of XCI. So we're just looking at the stock growth. We're not factoring in the dividends, but towards the end of the video, I'm going to do a comparison and show you guys the total returns of this fund over time. So you guys can see how the dividends make a big difference here because obviously it is a dividend based fund. So the year to date returns in terms of stock growth for XCI is up 0.37%. The one year return is negative 2%. Once again, we've seen a lot of the Canadian markets get pushed down quite a bit over the past year. The five year return of the stock growth of XCI is up 17%. And then obviously max over time, we can see that it's up 22.38%. This fund was created, or actually this graph was reported, first started reporting in 2011, so that's about, you know, 11, 12, 13 years or so, I would say, somewhere around there uh, right now. So the fund obviously isn't super old, but we've been able to see the fund grow over time. And once again, we do have a nice hefty dividend yield that's not being factored in here. So before we go any further, let's identify what type of investors XCI would be good for. So the main features of XCI, as you guys would probably imagine, is it pays a nice monthly dividend yield. So if you're looking for monthly dividend income, this ETF might be uh, right for you. It's got a fairly low MER or, or management cost, which we'll show you guys shortly here inside the video. And it's designed to be a long-term foundational holding inside your portfolio. So of course, you could hold this stock for a long period of time. You know, it's a big ETF with a lots of di different diversification inside the Canadian market. So if you're looking for a um, Canadian-based ETF, XCI XCI could definitely fit that uh, position inside your portfolio. And the investment objective of the fund is to seek long-term capital growth by replicating the performance of the S&P TSX Composite High Dividend Index next of expenses. So this fund is really focused on providing a good quality dividend yield, but also get some uh, growth as well and dividend growth from those stocks that holds. So in terms of total return, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to kind of cover the total return of the portfolio over time to factor in those dividends. So if you look at total return, we definitely see other dividends definitely are coming into work here. So over the past 10 years, if you would invest in the fund, you would get an average annual return of 6.7%. Over the past five years, you would get an average annual return of 7.87%. And over the past three years, you would, would have gotten an annual, re, annual, annual return on average of 15.43%. So it's been doing pretty good. And Inception, if you kind of like balance it out since the fund was first created, you would have got on average or so, give or take a 6.5% of total return. So obviously the fund does do quite well. Um, if you look at how it cum cumulative returns and how it adds up over time, we can see how that kind of basically adds up to be a total return of 117 uh, percent in total and we can look at the calendar year to get a better idea of what the markets are doing and i think this is important for investors to understand especially for beginners to kind of see how the markets move throughout the year because it's not always like an average return even if the average return is like seven percent per year you're not going to hit a seven percent growth per year really you're going to get like those big ups and downs and it can help you to identify how these funds kind of work and once again it's always important to kind of reference the markets to see what's going on in the world and stuff like that. Uh, but our total return for 2018 was negative 10%. And then we've seen a big rebound in 2019 for the overall markets. 2020 was an interesting year because the Canadian stocks did dip down quite a bit. We did see a bit of recovery, but the Canadian markets overall had a rough time during the pandemic. But we did see that huge recovery in 2021. And then 2022, we're kind of basically just trading neutral, give or take. So um, again, you know, you guys can reference those different years and see how the markets, you know, they're really up and down. Uh, but again, and with these dividend funds, you're really investing no dividends on a regular basis and you're buying the stocks and it's compounding and growing. So the dividends definitely help to kind of make that return pretty consistent. 
Now the nice thing about this fund is it does provide monthly dividends. So if we look at a quick little graph here, and one thing I do like about this fund is the dividends are pretty consistent. If we kind of go um, and kind of look how the dividends have increased over time, we've seen pretty consistent dividends. Now, once again, it's important to understand with ETFs, the dividends go up and down depending on you know different things that are happening with the stocks and the different things. So it's not uncommon for ETFs to kind of be a little bit up and down with their dividends. So kind of take that a note. But the one thing I do like about this fund is that the dividends are pretty consistent. And once again, like most dividend ETFs, we do see a regular increase in terms of those distributions and whatnot. But, you know, we do see pretty consistent dividends. We don't see, you know, too many wild, wildly swings here other than like, you know, during maybe like the pandemic and stuff like that. But overall, you know, one thing I'm a big fan of this fund is it does provide nice, consistent monthly dividend income. And some other things to take note in terms of the key tra key facts of the fund is going to be the number of holdings. We have 71 stocks inside the actual ETF itself. So when you buy one share of XCI, you're buying essentially 75 different stocks. And we'll go over and show you guys what stocks and the different allocations of those stocks. We can go through here and see that they do qualify for DRIP. So you guys can set up a DRIP with your brokerage if it supports that. And like I mentioned earlier, the distribution frequency is monthly. So if you want monthly in dividend income, this fund definitely might be for you. And right now, the fund is promote is uh, basically promoting a 5.19%, so about a little bit over 5% dividend yield. And once again, that's a fairly high dividend yield. And the reason why it's kind of been peaked up a little bit is because of, once again, the Canadian market's kind of dipping down over the past year or so. Uh, this fund usually is around that 4 to 5% range, but obviously with some of the financial stocks being pushed down a little bit, we're getting a little bit, little bit of a higher yield. So it's always a good time to buy during those dips to get those nice yields. And the pay, payout ratio, or the PE ratio, um, price to earnings ratio, I should say, sorry, um, PE means price to earnings ratio, is about 10.96. So once again, you guys can uh, look into that stuff and you can dive into the individual stocks if you want to look to see how they're doing and whatnot. But I can guarantee you that the vast majority of stocks inside these types of funds are always going to be good quality companies. You don't really have to worry about that. Going down here, we have the management fees. So once again, one thing I really like about this fund is it has very cheap management fees. A lot of the iShare funds and the Canadian-based ETFs are really good quality ones. Uh, you're paying very little on fees. So we have a management fee of 0.2%. Uh, and a total fee of 0.22%. So if you were to put this inside your portfolio, you would be paying uh, them to basically run the fund 0.22% of your portfolio, which is extremely low. That's pretty low. And in terms of risk indicator, we have it right slapped in the middle. I would say the fund is probably in the middle. We have a nice kind of mixture of you know high yield, but also good quality growth um, potential inside the fund as well. So um, I'd say it's pretty much in the middle. But once again, you know these ETFs are always some of the, the, the safest investments you can do because you're always buying a vast majority of different stocks, you're diversifying, and you're getting good quality companies. So I'll give you guys a quick little introductory to XCI. We talked a lot about the um, the ETF and basically how it works. Let's take a deeper dive and look at the holdings because the holdings of an ETF are important to understand. And when it comes to these good quality based ETFs, we want to see good quality stocks. And XCI does have some pretty good quality Canadian based dividend stocks. So let's take a peek. At, let's take a peek and see what those stocks are. Next, we're going to do a quick little overview of the different holdings inside this ETF. So as you guys can imagine, we're going to see a lot of the common uh, Canadian dividend stocks here. Although the allocations for this fund is a little bit different than some of the other ones. Um, this one is a little bit more focused on energy and actually a little bit more diversification than we see in some of the other ones. Some of the other ones, we might see a little bit more financials. Nonetheless, we're going to probably see financials in here and whatnot. Uh, but we'll do a quick little dive here inside the individual stocks first. So C&Q is going to be the biggest stock that we have inside the portfolio. And I'll give you guys a quick little tip here. If you go on the left side, you can see the ticker. Here you can see the actual name of the stock. You can see the sector here. You can see the market value. And then you can see the weighting. So there's, if you buy one share of XEI, you're buying 6% uh, of C&Q. If you're buying you know, one share of XEI, you're also getting 5.77% of Suncor. So this is the way the breakdown works in allocations and percentages you're getting of each stock. So it's important to note, uh, typically when you look at these pages, they'll have the, the, the bigger holdings at the top. And then as you go down, they kind of go smaller and smaller. So the top 10 holdings we have are en lots of energy companies. So CNQ, some oil like Suncor. We have the banks like Toronto and RBC. And then we have uh, TELUS and, and, and Bell for t telecommunications, Ambridge, Bank of Montreal, TC Energy, and then Bank of Nova Scotia. So pretty much for the most part, we have financials, energy, and communication. That's pretty common across uh, most Canadian based ETFs. If we go to the all holdings, we can see all the stocks so you guys could dive inside um, all the stocks we hold. So it holds. So also we have like Fortis, uh, Pembina, Brookfield. Um, we have CIBC, Manulife, you know, all the basic Canadian stocks you would expect, Canadian Tire. Uh, so there is quite a nice little mixture in here inside this um, this fund. And I actually like the holdings. Actually, I, 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 like, I like a lot of the top 10 holdings. They're pretty good quality stocks that I would hold myself individually. So, you know, it's pretty good fun there. Uh, in terms of its holding, once again, we see a nice split between energy and financials, utilities, even communication, and then a little bit of real estate materials and consumer discretionary. Um, 
Um, obviously, most of the higher yield ETFs don't have too much consumer stocks, which is unfortunate because um, they're more growth based companies. Uh, but we do see it in a nice spread across some different sectors here. Once again, we're pretty limited in Canada. We don't have a lot of different options, uh, but we do see, you know, energy, financials, utilities, communication, like a nice little spread here and a little bit of real estate. So you could theoretically use this as your main Canadian based ETF uh, fund if you wanted to. But of course, uh, it's up to you guys to decide if you want to kind of, you know, supplement with some different ETFs to kind of have more of a diversified approach. But more or less, you know, you could totally just run this as your main Canadian um, dividend fund if you wanted to. And if you guys want, there's this cool little fact sheet that you guys can download from their website as well that kind of goes into more information about the fund. So once again, we can kind of see basically everything I talked about here in a nice little organized, um, little more infographic kind of type approach if you guys like that kind of stuff. But we can see things like the growth of $10,000. So if you've invested $10,000 over the past, um, I think since the fund was started, they're doing this. Yes, beginning value of 2011 here to 2023, you would have, you know, $10,000 would have basically become about $23,000, $24,000, something along those lines, which which is pretty solid. So once again, you guys can kind of look at these different things here. Um, and and all, all, basically most of the stuff we already talked about. Uh, but again, nice little um, infographic if you guys would like to see the information in a bit of an easier to understand way. So overall, XCI is a great Canadian-based high dividend yield index that's going to give you a nice little monthly income. If you're looking for passive income, you're looking for an ETF with a decent yield, this fund is going to give it to you, but you're also going to get a nice combination of growth as well. So you're going to get both dividend yield as well as stock growth, which I'm a huge fan of. And XCI is a great ETF, and if you're looking for a Canadian-based ETF and to add inside your portfolio, I would highly recommend it. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like usual, if you guys want to um, like the video, that's awesome. It really helps out the channel. And if you guys want to subscribe, that really helps out the channel as well. Hope you guys are having yourself a good week. And if you guys have any questions about XCI or any of the topics I cover in today's video, be sure to just leave a comment and I'll get back to you guys as quick as possible. Take care. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.